love national parks. We love them so much, but it's really hard to rate them in order because they are so diverse and all so wild and so beautiful and so unique. We want to share some of our favorites because we've enjoyed them so much. Come on along and take a look at our 10 favorite national parks of the West. Number 10, Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota. We love these wide open badlands with their dramatic landscapes and the bison that wander throughout it, sometimes even through the campsites. We like hiking along the Little Missouri River and climbing the trails for scenic overlooks. No wonder it was the favorite get-away-from-it-all place for President Theodore Roosevelt, whose love of conservation led to the formation of America's national parks. Something also we like out there, the nearby town of Medora and the Medora Musical, an old-fashioned variety-type music show set in a spectacular outdoor theater and held each night of the summer. See why we come back to Theodore Roosevelt National Park each year? Number nine, Mesa Verde National Park in Southwest Colorado. This place is known for its well-preserved Native American cliff dwellings. There are more than 1,000 of them in structures built within caves and under outcroppings in the cliffs. The ruins are the largest archaeological preserve in the United States, scattered across 81 square miles. The park was created in 1906 by Theodore Roosevelt, and there are lots of spots to see them and even crawl through them. The sandstone dwellings are in excellent condition, and the U.S. Forest Service does a great job explaining everything. This is a huge park. To get to the cliff dwellings, you drive 23 miles up a winding mountain road, climbing to about 8,500 feet from the 6,500 at the campground level. There are several great hiking trails, too, for all levels. Sunsets are spectacular, and sunrises are peaceful in the clear, clean mountain air. Number 8, Rocky Mountains National Park on the Continental Divide in Colorado. Remember John Denver's song, Rocky Mountain High? Visit here and you'll want to sing it, if you can catch your breath. At 12,000 feet at the top, the ground is tundra and a great hiking trail gives spectacular views. Bighorn sheep live up here, enjoying the view. Trail Ridge Road has been dubbed the Highway to the Sky, and it is. In just about every list of best drives you'll find, it's in the top 10. It winds 48 miles between Estes Park on the east side and Grand Lake on the west. 11 miles of the highway travel above treeline. 
offering thrilling views, lots of wildlife sightings, and spectacular alpine wildflowers, all from the comfort of your RV. We drove our Class B Road Trek RV up there with no problems. There are lots of turnouts to stop where you can get acclimated to the altitude and then try and sing Rocky Mountain High, Colorado's official state song. Number seven, Grand Canyon National Park in Arizona. There are two places you can visit here, the South Rim, which is the most popular because it's most accessible, and the North Rim, which we usually find less crowded but equally spectacular. All we can say about the Grand Canyon is that it truly is grand. In fact, grand just isn't a strong enough superlative to describe the jaw-dropping majesty of the Grand Canyon. And as awesome as photos of the canyon may be, they don't do justice to the incredible beauty of the landscape. There are plenty of hiking trails along the top of the canyon, if you're in good shape and can devote most of the day to it. We recommend hiking down into the canyon on the North Kebab Trail. If driving is more your thing, try the Cape Royal Trail Drive that offers great views of the canyon, Angel's Window, and the Colorado River below. Like most national parks, the Grand Canyon is not particularly dog-friendly. But on the north side, there is a great hike that leashed dogs can do that starts from the visitor center and runs along the canyon wall to Bright Angel Point. It's only a half mile out and back, but there are plenty of little side perches you can take that you can get off the trail and very close to the edge. You and your dog will love it. Number six, Saguaro National Park in Southern Arizona. This impressive desert park has two sections on either side of the city of Tucson. The park is named for the large saguaro cactus native to its desert environment. In the western Tucson Mountain District, Signal Hill Trail leads to petroglyphs of the ancient Indian people who first lived here. In the eastern Rincon Mountain District, Cactus Forest Drive is a loop road with striking views of the desert landscape. Summertime is too hot for our tastes there. We like to visit in mid-spring. It's perhaps the most peaceful place we've ever been. Instant peace were the exact words Jennifer used. A total unwinding. There are great hiking and mountain bike trails all throughout the park which encompasses over 500 square acres. And don't even attempt a hike without bringing lots of water. Nothing dehydrates faster than the desert. And oh yeah, watch out for rattlesnakes. They live out there. Number five, Bryce National Park in Utah. This 37,000 acre park 
consisting of a spectacular red rock canyon shaped like a natural amphitheater, about 20 miles long, three miles wide, and up to 800 feet deep. It is a place where erosion has carved delicate and colorful pinnacles and spires called hoodoos. There are lots of hikes you can take in and around the canyon. Paved trails along much of the rim are permissible for leashed dogs. Pets, though, are not welcome on the dirt and gravel trails that drop below the rim. If you want to do an under-the-rim hike, set aside a full day. When we're there, we like to hang out between sunrise and sunset points, about a half mile apart. We just like to sit there and watch and photograph the changing colors as the sun sets. You will love this park. Number four, Zion National Park, also in Utah, about 70 miles to the west of Bryce. This place is so spectacular and beautiful that the early pioneers called it Zion, like the holy place in the Bible. And indeed, standing under the soaring, multicolored sandstone cliffs, gazing down into the canyon or hiking is intensely mystical, almost religious in its awesomeness. Zion is not a place where you'll drive around in your RV or your car, for those of you with toads. Leave your vehicle in the campground or visitor center. There are only 800 parking spots at the various vantage points and hiking trails and attractions. So the way to get to them is on the park service buses that run every few minutes from 6 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. There are a variety of hikes, ranging from easy to very challenging. If you're in good shape, I highly recommend the Narrows Trail, which starts out as a mile-long paved trail and then empties into the Virgin River. You then wade the river upstream. You go as far as you want until the canyon walls are so narrow you can touch both sides at once. It's tough going in spots, but oh, so, so worth it. One of the best hikes we have ever taken. Number three, Banff National Park and Lake Louise in Alberta, Canada. They're located in the Canadian Rockies, and Lake Louise is known for its turquoise, glacier-fed waters ringed by high peaks that make for postcard-like photographs. It offers views in every direction of postcard-perfect mountains, some nearly 12,000 feet high. Banff is Canada's oldest national park, and it was established in 1885, located in the Rockies an hour west of Calgary. A great way to experience the park is on the Banff Legacy Trail. It's a non-motorized paved trail for incorporating scenic views, 16 miles long, it runs along the Trans-Canada Route 1 and the wildlife fence from the park's east gate to the Bow Valley Parkway. Johnston Canyon is one of the most popular day hikes in Banff National Park. It's fairly easy making it perfect for families and people of almost any fitness level and age. 
It's accessible year-round, including the winter. You're rewarded with a gorgeous view of a waterfall. Allow four days to fully explore this place. Number two, Glacier National Park in Northern Montana. We try to visit this park every year. When it comes to beauty and sheer landscape drama, Glacier can't be beat. Start by taking a bus tour on the Going to the Sun Road, a 50 mile long road that connects the park's east and west sides and makes its way up to Logan Pass at the 10,000 foot level. It just may be the most beautiful drive you've ever been on. It's a bit scary. The road twists and turns and is bordered with steep rock walls on one side and thousand foot drop offs without guardrails on the other side. There are so many places to hike at Glacier. And wildlife abounds. Moose, bear, elk, mountain goats, and deer are common sights. Make sure that you always carry bear spray when hiking here. We see black bear and grizzlies on every visit. And number one, Yellowstone National Park. This was America's first national park, and it's our favorite. A place so big, it lies in part of two states, Montana and Wyoming. We were warned many years ago that the place will get in your blood and that uh, you will keep coming back to Yellowstone again and again, and we now visit every year. So if you haven't been there yet, I pass along the same warning, it will grab hold of you. It is that spectacular for those who love the wilderness and getting up close and very personal with it, Spend a day or two visiting the spectacular thermal areas, including Old Faithful. They are easy hikes and boardwalks that will get you very close. Also visit Yellowstone's Grand Canyon. There are great hikes there to spectacular waterfalls. We always spend a day in the northeast section of the park in expansive Lamar Valley, a popular wolf and grizzly watching area and also populated by large herds of bison. I warn you, you gotta devote a week to Yellowstone and then you'll just be scratching the surface until your next visit. In fact, just talking about it makes us anxious to get back. So those are our favorite 10 national parks of the West, and I know we missed a bunch, but don't worry, we'll show those in future videos. But we hope that this brief look at our 10 favorite national parks of the West gives you an idea on how the RV lifestyle can let you go out there and visit them up close and personal. 
Thanks so much. Would you do us a favor if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. YouTube really likes it when videos get thumbs up. And please subscribe to our RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. We're Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.